Hi, it's Joyce. I've got a new lesson for you um, for drawing the Kellogg stables. Here it is, done in charcoal by me. Here's another one I did with soft pastel. And here's another demo I did with Conte crayon and charcoal black. Um, whichever scene you are going to do, decide your color for the theme. Now here it is in the old days when it used to be horse stables. William Kellogg, the serial guy, he owned the whole property of Cal Poly as it is now. There he is, he's off the left with his horse, and he raised Arabian horses. In the hallways you'll see the horse stable doors. Student Masa Mahmood did a beautiful rendition of this hallway in colored pencil. Here it is in the old days with the horses in the courtyard and the fountain. And Fiona Hahn of Cal Poly, a student, did this rendition using color pencils of the courtyard. Here's another view looking at the east face of Cal Poly and here's one done with oil pastel, charcoal, and another view I did of this um, archway I did in pastel and I have a demo here on YouTube. So here's my finished uh, graphite drawing of the Kellogg Horse Stables. As you can see, I um, worked hard to get the lines of the building correct. I accentuated the highlight and shadow to separate, for instance, the planes of the turret and the different planes of the walls. I put in three palm trees, as you can see, but not the flag, um, although that would be a very nice thing to put in. Um, I'm going to do another one now in graphite using more of a one-point perspective. Okay, here's another view of the Kellogg Horse Stables that I'm going to develop into a drawing. The first thing I'm going to do is create a simple layout box, maybe five by seven. And I'm going to situate the different parts of the horse stables, the palm tree, and the hills behind it. I would say um, Probably the turret is the first thing I'm going to put in. It's going to be about there with a very shallow roof. Um, the next thing I'm going to look at though is the body of the horse stables, where the horse stables actually used to be. And for that, I'm going to need to do some perspective drawing. So I've got one congruent line here and for the roof line I think that would probably go about there. So I'll lay that in. Um, let's see, my next step I think I would put in this section of the roof. It's a little bit funky. It's got its own little roof. And this part of the roof would go off the page to yet another vanishing point over here. Now, the roof would go like this and then it kind of slants down and then this part of the roof would also meet that point. So, let me look at that. I think that would work okay. I would probably 
put the three palm trees in about here. I would put the actual hill area here and these hills in the background. Now, what I think about this layout is I think it fills the picture plane pretty well, but I'm also thinking that I would like to put some clouds up in the sky later. And I don't know if I want all this grass area. So let's see, I would probably put the ivy and the bushes here. That eats up some of the space. It's got, this photograph I took, it's got a lot of late afternoon shadows and highlights from the sun. The long afternoon light popping in. Okay, I changed my mind. I think actually this would look pretty good because of all the activity with the light bars on the grass. I think that would fill it up really nicely. Another way I could crop it I could do something like this and that would zoom into your focal point which is a turret a little bit better but I think I'll stick with this one for right now. So I've got my H pencil, my eraser. I'm going to start uh, the bigger layout on a piece of paper. Um, I'm going portrait style so let's see again I'm gonna figure the the turret itself which is to me a focal point is gonna go about here so I'm just gonna briefly mark that and the building here is gonna go to a vanishing point well off to the right so what I'm gonna do on my table I'm putting an eraser where my vanishing point is going to be now a curious thing about the turret, because it's made out of adobe, um, it's thicker at the bottom and lighter at the top, thinner. So the walls are quite thick at the bottom. That means the walls are slanting a little bit. If you hold your pencil up and you sight the building, um, you are definitely going to see it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by throwing in the turret here with slightly angled walls. This turret is actually part of an octagonal shape, which if you walk around it in real life next time you're out at Cal Poly, you will see that it has eight panels. Some of the panels are thicker and some are not. For instance, if a bird is flying over this turret, it's going to see an octagon something like this. And the windows that you see are always two windows on the wider side, not the um, na more narrow side. So that's what it would look like from a bird's eye view. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my time because this is really important. I put an ellipse here for the bottom of the roof and I am going to carefully lay out where the panels Go. and then there's another narrow one here. Here's my median line which I will erase from here. You notice that the roof is is not going to be that tall and notice also most people would use this line of the e ellipse to um, create the roof. Um, it's a little bit of a um, weird thing because 
it's the upper line that you want to use. Think about if you held an ice cream cone above your head and you looked up, you would not be seeing this line. You'd be seeing that line at the top. So I'm going to erase that a little bit. Like that. And I'm going to put the roof in of the turret about here. Okay. What happens is the turret kind of goes around Let's shorten this one a little bit more. Um, and the sections of the roof become flattened. It's no longer a curvature because they are matching where the panels happen on the side of the turret. This is the hardest part of this whole composition. If you can get this part down and it looking good, everything else is a lot easier to handle. So, there's also going to be kind of a sub level to the turret. So now the next part I'm putting in is the actual building next to the turret that many years ago housed the horses, the Arabian horses. Okay, so that's about where it's going to be. I have a vanishing point way off the page. I have my eraser marking it. So I can use a ruler if I want or if I'm good at using my eyes to find the congruent lines. That's how I did it. I put in this main wall. Now there's a third section which is a little bit kind of funky. There's like a red roof here and then what happens here is the corner of another building is sitting on top of the actual old horse stables. And the way it works is it's kind of incorporated into the side of the turret. It's a little bit wacky, but we can do it. Now, this line here for the top of the roof, that would go off to yet another vanishing point, which just because it's one line, I'm just going to guess it. So I'll make this part go down here. And then I will make this part hit the top. Okay. Now, notice that I've been using transparent construction. So I can make sure everything's working together at this point. I am going to move on to place the hill. So what I'm going to do with the hill, I'm going to make it quite a high looking hill, almost as if this is a castle sitting on top of a really high hill somewhere mysterious. Uh, let's see. Bushes are going to go about there. I'm going to put in palm tree number one. Now these palm trees are all the same height in the photograph. But what I would like to do is I can put one palm tree about here. I can lower this palm tree here and I'll put the third one some distance away for effect and maybe make that in about the middle area. Okay, so that'll fill up the sky really nicely. I am going to draw in Elephant Hill which is in the background 
Well, I grew up in Pomona, and this back here, we used to hike here. It's called Elephant Hill. It used to have a cave, but um, the city blasted the cave to smithereens because people were going up there and having cave parties. <laughs> anyway, um, now I'm going to put in this bush here, and I'm also looking at this part here. Let's erase this. I'm going to erase this construction here just so I can kind of clean it up and see where I'm going as I start work again on the building. So what happens with this part of the building, it does have kind of a darkened wall that goes back inside so that this part juts out and then this part becomes a little bit recessed. Um, here you've got those enormous stable doors for the horses and this part is the old original shutter so that each horse could look outside through this top area whenever they wanted to. I think I'll put a horse head in here just for fun. Okay, then there's another door here, but at this point it's kind of going off the edge of the picture plane. Um, let's see. Now I'm going to hit one stable door here. Remember, try to keep your lines vertical. It's easy to get a little bit slanted, but that can mess up your drawing. And I'm going to put in a couple of windows here. Like that. Now time to put all the rest of the windows in. I'll pr try putting these in next. Let's see. I notice one thing is that, you know what? The side of this building, I need to make it longer because according to the photograph, it should not be ending here. So I'm going to erase those windows too. And I'm going to make that adjustment. Um, okay, I'll put these two windows about here. There, that looks better. That works. Next window I'm going to put in is under the apex roof here. So I'm going to draw a line to show the middle. The bottom of this window is informed by that vanishing point off the left. So the way I'm going to do this is like this. And if you end up putting the slats in the window they would go in like that. I've got two of these windows I need to put in. I think I'm going to move this line over a bit. There. Give myself more space for those windows. So if that panel is moved over then yes, I have a lot of room for both my windows here. No problem. Am I going to put in all these windows? I don't know. I could, because another window goes here. I think I'll skip that one. I'll put these two in here. And I will also put the other two that sit here. Okay. Ivy's going to go here, the lines of light from the late afternoon sun are going to go around here. I'm going to make them sloping because they're sloping down a slight hill and it gives more of a feeling of space. Okay. Very quickly, I'm using a dark shading pencil and I'm Pressing down super, super light, holding the pencil by its back end 
to kind of put some pigment into the sky. And I'm doing it a little bit random to make room for clouds that are going to be coming in. Now normally I would use my blending stick to move and smooth some of the sky areas, but today I'm just going to do it um, with a Kleenex because the sky is such a broad area. It's just tremendously large part of the composition. You know, the Kleenex, if I'm pressing very hard on this tissue and I'm trying to remember where I put the clouds in. If I go over the clouds, I can probably erase it. Well, I like the soft effect that it's giving right now. And I think it's working pretty well. I am going to um, make the top part of the sky a bit darker for atmospheric perspective. So I'll put a little bit more pigment over that. Now if you're using a color pencil on this guy, you're not going to be able to do this because color pencils are pretty waxy. And they're, they would take a lot more muscle to get those pigments on the paper probably the way you want or they're very enriched. It's fun to do though. Um, if I were going color with this, I would probably um, do the sky with pastels, give it a spray, and then use color pencils on the rest of it. And I'll give another demo on that later. I used my large eraser and I softened the white cloudy areas a bit before I moved on. But now what I'm doing is working on the palm trees. So depending upon the species of tree you're looking at, these are king palm by the way, um, the trunks may be thick but with a king palm they're going to be really thin and tall. Now, these are really tall palm trees. Make them any height you really prefer. Let's see, where did I put the next one? The next one is actually in shadow in the bottom part because this turret is not letting the sun approach it. So this is going to be a really dark one. Notice that I'm keeping my hand on a piece of paper. You can use wax paper, tracing paper, just so that my palm doesn't access the drawing and smear it. We all make that mistake. It's very easy to do. Now I'm going to put on the petticoat or the palm tree on the left. Well, the sun's on the right, so I'm going to keep certain areas on the right very light and I'm going to make the petticoat a little bit longer than it really is just because it's so pretty I'll make it a little bit bigger. Now <clears throat> what the petticoat is or the skirt that's where when the palm trees die and they turn yellow they instead of falling off completely they often just fall down onto the petticoat making another interesting layer. Um, when I grew up in Pomona, a lot of the palm trees had really thick petticoats because many people didn't trim them. But um, it's probably more hygienic to um, keep them cleaner. I notice the Cal Poly palm trees are cleaned up regularly, so they don't develop a really huge petticoat. Okay, now, I've got some basic palm fronds in here. I'm going to move over 
and do the next one which is quite a bit bigger. It's also catching more sunshine so it's going to be lighter. A little bit darker over here. Probably what's happening with this one is it's a bigger palm tree and it's putting this one in to shade while it catches the sun. And it has a really large petticoat. I'm not seeing the top of this palm tree. So what I, I could uh, Google up a picture of a king palm and kind of fake it out. Or go take my own photo, refer back to some of the photos I already took. That's what a professional would do. Refer back to your own reference photos of whatever project you're working on. Okay. Finished up the palm trees. Uh, I put most of the palm fronds in silhouette because when you do look up at trees during the daytime they are often in silhouette against the bright sky. What I'm doing right now is I'm shading in Elephant Hill in the background and I don't want to make it too high contrast for the simple reason it's in the deep space and you're not going to see really vibrant colors or values in deep space whereas like the picture of the turret is very um, much a focal point partly because it's very high contrast that's what you'd have to plan on so I shaded in the rooftop to the turret which is kind of a convex shape um, and I made sure that I made each plane of the turret a different value tone. Um, now I'm over here working on the um, other section of the building. And the window, I put a shadow underneath this area here. And in fact, this part of the building is in a lot of shade so I'm gonna go ahead and just put a nice medium coat on that of course here is where the sunshine comes on this plane I'm gonna make sure I keep that pretty light the roof is going to be darker it's gonna be like a mediumish grayish because it's a medium terracotta red so that'll work um, in terms of the window and the details that you put in it as well as the details you would put into the roof tiles that's going to be up to you um, if you do a super nice job shading and coloring I don't think you really need a bunch of details like that I'm not putting them in myself now this roof of course is very light, it's catching a lot of sunshine. So I'm just going to shade that quickly. So I've done a lot of the building. I'm going to move to the bushes and the ivy and then the grass. Remember that I kind of planned out with shapes where the ivy and the bushes would go and when you do that if you do this drawing just plan it out you don't have to do every single area now I'm putting a bush here and it's going to be getting light on the right side but underneath, the foliage and the leaves are going to be pretty dark. So I'm going to do this one again. 
my pencil should be a lot sharper than what it is now because if my pencil were a lot sharper this would go easier and faster so when you guys are working in fact I'm going to shut off the camera right now so I can sharpen my pencil there that's better I got a sharpened pencil seriously if you don't keep your pencil sharpened you add so much time and frustration onto your drawings it just makes a lot of sense to kind of keep everything in order. Now let's see. I'm looking at the photograph. This part of the ivy is actually quite dark. It's in shade from the um, turret. And I got to finish the hill over here too. These are California scrub oaks on top of Elephant Hill. I used to go hiking here a lot. And a lot of people with those remote control planes, they love to go to the top of Elephant Hill. Because you get a 360 degree view of the entire valley. So it's really fun. You should go sometime. There's also an ancient Indian burial place right over here that is locked up. People aren't allowed to go there. Now, lastly, I am going to put the grass in. And I'm going to go with the flow of the hill and the line of the shadows and the light. Am I going to put in little bitty pieces of grass, like little blades? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, look at the big picture and how you're going to see it. Go ahead and put in your shadows. There's going to be a big shadow here from the building. And my favorite horse there, I'll call him Mr. Ed. A um, little bit of more shadow here from the building as well. Okay, I can take my handy dandy blending stick and what I will do is I will tighten up a few details but for the most part this is pretty finished so thanks for watching.